What's up guys, Freeman here and welcome back to another video. So, and today also I actually wanted to talk about a subject that I totally forgot because the first time I actually made this video, the microphone wasn't working and uh, so it gave all the, all the background noise, it was too windy and I just bloody hated it. Um, and it was basically a, a response to a question that I received, um, or more likely a comment that I got on my channel, basically saying, why should I stop? You know, why should I stop anything? Why should I, why, why should I stop nicotine? I'm, I'm enjoying it, I, this is fine, this is great, why should I stop? And um, first of all, addressing that question direct, that, sta that, that statement directly, I'm so used to questions, is um, basically like, you don't have to. It's the same thing with everything. I'm not one of those people that goes around saying that this is the way to live, that this is the way to live your life, that just because I'm doing it and I'm doing this challenge, that means everyone who is doing it should be doing this challenge. No, if you are doing this, you know, if you're smoking and you're watching this, you don't have to stop. If you're vaping and you're watching this, you don't have to stop. Honestly, it's your life. And there's multiple reasons for that. One is that I've been doing enough of these cleanses to know that people are ready when they are ready and that you don't just try and tell people, oh, you should stop this, you should stop that, you should stop this, especially if you're not someone who has at least either one attempted to or two already have done it. Most of the time we're like, oh yeah, this is a great idea, but we're not actually doing it ourselves. Don't do that. What I really recommend is if you really want to help people, help yourself first or don't help them at all. Um, and also, like I said before, people, sometimes people are not ready. Sometimes people are in very, very vulnerable states. And this is not towards the, per the person who actually made that comment. This is mainly because there are some people out there um, who are so stressed that if you were to take away their nicotine, their alcohol, their whatever the hell, they'd probably go on a fucking rampage. Like there are people out there who are just being held together by booze. I think it, what, what was it that, that quote? And again, I'm not talking to the commenter directly here. What was it that quote? If you take away the tobacco and the coffee um, and like the bread or like or like the cheese, there'd be there'd be riots in the streets the next day. I think it was something along those lines is that people quite literally are held to civilization is held together by drugs. It's held together by drugs. It's held together by caffeine. It's held together by morphine. It's held together by nicotine. If you take those things away, guess what? The whole thing comes crumbling down. People don't like I'm not catastrophizing. If we took away the nicotine, if we took away the coffee, if we took away the, the cheese and the morphine and everything else and all the other stuff, society would collapse. It would collapse. And it's not because, oh, people like to say, oh, we, 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 we're, just, we're just meant to be, throughout time, we've had drugs all of our lives and all this stuff. No, 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 no. It's sp spiringly, not as much as we had before. Like, like, like the Native Americans, they did not smoke tobacco continuously. They had it. They had it in small amounts. They, we didn't drink coffee continuously. We had it in small amounts. But now, society, especially in the Western world, has become so unbalanced that, that if you were to take away those things, it would collapse. I'm, I'm, I shit you not. It would. There would be a total period of anarchy. There would be some recovery afterwards. Obviously, it wouldn't be like Armageddon, but it would be riots just everywhere. Society would just shut it to a stop for a period of time. And that's why I don't usually go around encouraging people, oh, you should just stop this, stop that. And now obviously I've just jumped from two big examples, but the, but the thing is, like I said, people are ready when they're ready. People are ready when they're ready. And if you try and get someone to quit early and prematurely, you can actually do them more harm than good. Like for example, if you try and get someone to quit something without addressing the underlying emotional course while they're doing it, what's gonna happen? They're going to then like, pick up some other bad habit. If you don't teach them how to replace one bad habit with a good one, they're just gonna pick up an, another habit. And who knows, this habit could be far worse. It could be, could be, could be illegal drugs. It could be anything, you know? It could be beating the shit out of your cat. I don't know, it could be anything. Speaking of which, my co-star is gone. Um, <laughs> I tried, the, the last time I actually tried filming this, he actually got into a fight with the next door neighbor's cat and I think that that was because he, he wasn't getting paid enough because I wasn't making enough videos so he's taking up a part-time job as a bouncy cat. A bouncy cat, a bruiser, a bouncer, a bouncy cat, what the fuck. Um, anyway, um, when you're you ready, when you're ready, do it. When you're ready, do it. But don't beat yourself up if you can't you know, get to day 10 or day five or, you know, day, day, whatever. Don't beat yourself up. It's a slow journey. It's, it's a slow process. And doing this and getting to the point where I'm right now, because it's a shame I haven't, fil I haven't filmed a lot of it, is that I've realized that my emotional development directly correlated with how many days I could go without nicotine. It's that simple. I was, the reason why I relapsed before wasn't because I was somehow bad. It's because I was not emotionally ready to get off nicotine. And that is the reason why I do not go around telling everyone, oh, do this, do that, because people have to be ready for it. And then there's the other side of the coin. It's your life. I don't, I don't consider myself superior for not, for not vaping compared to someone else. There are people who are living much happier lives than me, have been more successful, and they're smoking and they're doing all sorts of crazy crap. 
I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, I'm superior to you because I can do this, that and the other. No, it's a different kind of lifestyle, that's all. And it's a very common theme, I guess you've noticed in a lot of my videos, that I always start off my videos saying, it's video, question mark, question mark. I don't ever say the dates. It's not because I'm trying to instill some sort of lesson while I can't have van, but I deliberately don't count the days for whatever I'm doing. Any sort of a challenge, any sort of a fast or whatever, I never count the days. Fasts are a bit different though, because that's, I need to, I need to maintain and takes find out about how I am and just my general health it's a bit more dangerous but when it comes to no fap and no vape and stuff like that don't count the days just stop and then just time goes a lot quicker so near miss near miss uh, a few weeks ago I nearly cracked and um, it just goes to show how you really can't let your guard down how you really can't just be like oh, okay you know this is it's gonna be easy I'll just coast through the whole thing and then you know one day you know I'll be free from tobacco you know after you after you reach a certain point you get very very cocky at least I do um, because I once I've gotten past that first or second week I don't feel the cravings apart from like an assassin in the night or just sneak up on you and then when you least expect it and you're least vulnerable and just jab and that happened to me a few days ago uh i was dropping my sifter off um uh, in my car and um her boyfriend gave her because they didn't know that i was still smoked that i hadn't smoked and uh so she get she literally handed me a giant pack of marlboros a giant pack of marlboros and it was free massive pack of Marlboro cigarettes because he got them from from work and um, normally that I, I'd be fine but that was after I had a long day at work and a store that I did not want to work out and I I Jekyll and Hyde did right there I was I literally just like just fighting I was just like no get that get that shit away from me she was like hey what's wrong get that shit away from me right now because I felt it came right back again that sort of that sort of demon that comes and tries to claw its way back and says hey you know remember that feeling remember that craving remember all that stuff and um it was a really tense ride i just said look just put it away take it away i just drove us straight home i just went straight into my room just fucking distracted myself with video games <laughs> not luckily because i'm on no fight because that would have it would have been a different kind of a distraction but you know what i mean i basically just distracted myself for the whole time and it just goes to show you like you really can't let you really can't let your guard down and it's really like I have no idea how long it will take to truly heal the nicotine addiction. I remember someone saying that basically the key to really getting over nicotine is to is to basically never stimulate the brain. Like never, st it's absolutely important to not stimulate the brain on any nicotine, even if it's a small amount, because the moment you do, those pathways will start to become active again. But you have to starve those brain pathways for a long enough time for the new pathways to basically take it, to basically take hold. And I found that recently is that. Um, once I've gotten over that that sort of plateau, as long as I stay away from nicotine, it's absolutely fine. And I remember one one of the reasons why I did used to relapse beforehand was mainly because of um, was mainly because I would sort of think to myself, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could just have just one? You know, it's, it's been about two three weeks. No, I don't just, you know, just treat myself. You know, someone sort of hands you a cigarette, or you know, sometimes your you know your 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 your, your work colleague is there. You've you've had a long day. You think to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna reward myself. I'm gonna be nice to myself. I'm I, I'm too harsh. Maybe one cigarette. I'd fucking don't do it. Honestly, don't do it. It's so bloody stupid. I mean, half the time you actually do that. It's just you're just deceiving yourself because you overestimate your own willpower. You basically think to yourself, "Oh yeah, like it's gonna be fine. I can handle it. I can handle it." No, you can't. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a challenge, would it? Like, no, no, no. So, like, absolute discipline is absolutely key to really getting to. I don't even know. I don't know. I, like I said, I have no idea how long I'm going to be doing this for. But anyway, anyway, that's all I've got to say for you today. Hopefully this comes out well in post because I've done like five different outtakes. That's all I've got to say. Free men out and peace.